I have some exciting news. Mm -hmm. Very exciting news today. I can't remember how to do this right. Ah, oh, yes, like that. Yes, we are gonna blow up the island once more. Yes, remember guys how we blew that up in like between episode 45 and 46. Yeah, fun stuff. So let's go do that again. Why don't we do that again? Okay, guys, I was just joking about that. Yeah, we don't want to go through that again. Uh, that was quite terrible. But anyway, so we're here in the desert. Now, yeah, this is where I've been harvesting all my sand and stuff. You can see it's quite, you know, all rumpled up and stuff. I've just been using my efficiency tools and digging through all the sand and the sandstone to get all that sandy stuff we need. So as you can see, I've wiped out quite a lot of this area. Um, over there actually was actually naturally stone, so... Yeah, there was actually no sand here, so yeah, I wasn't that crazy. Uh, it's quite far away from our island, you know, how we had to go across the ocean to get the, to the stronghold. Just past there is the desert. I think we found that like a while ago, uh, quite a long time ago, but yeah, I, that's where I've been harvesting my stuff. And I've bring along some TNT. Now, we aren't going to TNT mine sand because, alright, now if we, we can do a little test right there. Oh, this is going to be fine. I think that's the first TNT I've ever ignited in this world. Actually, properly. Alright, so let's see how much sand we got from that. Alright. Now, I think TNT destroys 75% of items. So, from that, uh, I'm not, I, I can't be bothered doing math at the moment, but we would have gotten a whole heap more of sand if we just shoveled it out. Actually, it might have not been that accurate, but... Anyways, yeah, that's why TNT, I don't think, is the greatest method of mining sand. I, I just find efficiency tools faster. Uh, but what I wanted to do is start up a new strip mine, because having one underneath the island is quite, you know, meh. It doesn't feel as nice. Alright, so I think right here is perfect. It's nice and flat, so let's ju just dig a, dig a hole, like, straight down to uh, bedrock. Alright. And I'll probably need some ladders. Oh, good thing I brought some of that stuff. Alright, so I'll meet you guys down by bedrock. Oh. Boy, we've already we've already found something. Let's explore a bit. Alright. Oh, hello there. Okay, now. Um, this changes things entirely. Probably should get TNT out of my bar. Probably not going to use any TNT. Want to block that off. Uh, I don't have any time, really, to go any mining, but that goes pretty deep. That's a pretty cool ravine. Hello. <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, because I was sneaking. That's There we are. He just got a taste of his own medicine. Can't reach a torch over there. Wow, that's a pretty cool uh, thing. I may explore that. Oh, I think... Is that bedrock over there or is that just cobwebs? No, I think it's just cobwebs. That's a pretty cool th thing right there. Uh, we're just going to ignore that. Um, I'm going to have to find some other way to uh, make a mine somehow. I have no idea. But I'll make one around here. So that's just uh, some news. Yeah, I, I thought of blowing up some stuff today, but... If we're gonna have that big ravine in there. Nah, it's, it's just ruined my mood now. So let's just go back to the island and do something else for today. Okay, so we're arriving back. Alright, let's see if we can get this boat dock to do its thing. Okay, we don't have to come in all that fast or slow or anything. Oh, oh, that's, this is gonna be tough. What? Why is it not lifting us? That water should lift us. Back out here. Okay, something's strangely wrong. Very, something's very wrong at the moment. I think that sign actually is preventing us from going up. So, uh, can I actually remove that? Uh, axe. There we are. Oh, there we are. Perfect. Uh, up we go. And, perfect. So I let go of my keys. Let it do its thing. Awesome. Cool. And it goes back into its place. Cool. Now, today, guys, I have some plans. We'll uh, talk about TNT later. We'll, uh, I'll 
be sure to keep some um, TNT footage on camera. Uh, if I ever go there again and try and actually make a strip mine there, I'm good on resources at the moment, I'd say. I was going, oh, I forgot to make a nether portal there. That's what I forgot. Uh, no, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that some other time. So, uh, I'm still waiting feedback on the farms and stuff. I don't know if you guys actually give any feedback on stuff like that. Which is not very helpful, but it doesn't really matter. Because today we're doing something else, not the nether warp farm today. We're going to work on a, another farm. So, last time we worked on the nether, actually. And I want to show you guys some of the progress I made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost forgot about that. The nether. Uh, some ideas on that is still appreciated, too. Yeah. Need, still need to get my inspiration into the inspiring insp mood and whatever. Now that we have a problem here. Oh, did you hear that sound? A ghast. Yeah. Ghasts can probably spawn in here. Now, a ghast, I th oh, I didn't look it up, but I think they need like a 4x4 uh, four four area to spawn. Uh, centred around here, so they could go uh, one and a half blocks. Oh, I can't remember now. So they, they need a big area to spawn, and since this is all flat and nice, they can spawn on the cobble blocks, I'm pretty sure, which we don't want. Uh, ways we can prevent this is by lowering the roof, or by putting slabs on the floor in random spots. Alright, oh, now what I have done is this, some quartz pillars. Now those look pretty nice, I like that, it kind of dips in with the floor, and this kind of spreads out like a railing kind of Don't, not sure if that looks nice uh, maybe we should just have some stone slabs to replace that instead but we kind of have like some stone brick stairs to reinforce it and then we've got our large pillar and that's just leading out to the side into the portal um, still need to do, do it on this side but that took me one stack of nether quartz as in the the, the stuff nether quartz took me one stack of that to do just that which Wow, that's that means we have to harvest so much quartz to actually make anything, which is a pain. What I've heard is we can make like a nether quartz uh, mine, where we go far out into the nether and we just like mine in the like uh, like go deep in, into under the nether and just keep mining like in a straight line, you know, something like that. But yeah. I think it um, probably be best if I use the fortune pick if I ran along there and yeah. did stuff. And Alright, we'll talk about stuff like that later. But today we're going to work on another farm. I'm still needing ideas on if I should make big, big modifications like the spawner or some other big farm. But here, this area here, uh, I've got some ideas for it. Now it's quite a large area and we don't have two separate farms like this but what I want to do is kind of smush uh, I think I have a total of one two three four four different ideas for farms and we're going to smush them all together into this area here all right now yeah it sounds kind of stupid and how am I ever going to do that but yeah you, you guys will see so first off I need to get some sense in there bring me some resources and clear out this area which I'll do really quickly Okay, guys, so, yeah, just a little break from that. Uh, yeah, I said we weren't going to work on the Nether Warp Farm, but, um, just read the comments. Okay, of, like, five episodes ago, I'm not sure now. Yeah, uh, and you guys like the iron bars, so, bang, there they are. Finally, after quite some time, probably, like, two weeks, you posted your comment saying, I should use iron bars. Yep, now we got them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what I've got here is they are coming off over here to the side a bit, and they connect up. Now I haven't done it for all of them yet because yeah, I, I don't have any more iron in here, so I'm gonna have to go get some more and fill that up. So I'm just gonna do that as well sometime. And I uh, have I no, I haven't cleared anything out. Yeah, so. Alright, so I'm going to get some more iron bars and stuff, and I'll clear out that area, and we will move on. Okay, so guys, I've cleared this out. Yep. Oh, almost. Now. Now it's done. Now, now I can say I've cleared it out, and now I've been thinking things through, and yep, 
we are going to build a grass farm. Now, no, I did say that there are going to be multiple farms in one. And what I mean by that is we're going to have a grass farm, a mycelium farm, if we can ever find any, the mushroom purpley grass stuff. Mushroom biome purple grass. That, yeah, uh, I have one of those here. And, and what was it? A vine farm and a cocoa bean farm. Now, I wanted to throw these all together in one because I don't really need cocoa beans. I don't really need vines. I don't really need grass and mycelium. But they're always handy. So, you know, I think having a little grass farm here and there and a little mycelium farm would go quite nicely. And I'm just playing things through. Now, look over here. We have a problem. We've encountered the the wall of the uh, pumpkin farm, which is a problem, and so right underneath here are the levers to the farm, which is a problem. Now, as you can see, the grass has grown, and if you didn't know, uh, this grass will probably grow quite fast, because grass f spreads downwards, you know, a lot more quickly, because uh, it can only spread one block upwards, so... Like, that, this grass can spread up to there, but, like, nothing else can, except for if there were, like, grass all around it. So it spreads quickly down, because we have, uh, if we had grass here, it can spread down. If we had grass here, we had, it can spread down. Grass here spreads down, and all of that, so it will speed up. So I think the grass we want to harvest is here. I was also considering even having grass right there, and maybe possibly even having like a staircase down. Uh, but then this grass would interfere a bit, we can break that a bit, and then walk underneath there. I guess that could work. That would work out nicely. Uh, let's see if we can do that. Do we have any stairs? We have a few stairs. Uh, let's just craft some sandstone ones really quickly so we can check out how this looks. Alright. Now, sandstone stair, sandstone stair. Alright, so now we have... Hmm, this may not work out as how I plan. Alright, let's stick all the way to the end. Cool. We can fill that up with grass. Whoops. Alright. And let's make sure we take out those, actually. And we come down here, and we can look at the grass. And if it's all grown, we can just go shovel. And we can replant it. Yeah, that would be pretty neat. We have the grass here, the grass here, and all of that. Um, I was also considering having this grass here, so I could just shovel along there. And I think that actually could be an idea. So we could have things set up like this. Alright. Cool, so we could choose this row here, and we could harvest this grass. Now, as you can see, all I'm doing is harvesting dirt and then replanting it. Now that's not exactly what we want. What we want is uh, to be able to uh, silk touch this. So if I had a silk touch shovel, actually I have a silk touch pick. Now I know this is a waste, but if we use a silk touch pick, you can see that, silk touch one on that pick, we use it. Oh my gosh, it's magic. It's grass. Yep, yeah, you can get grass just like that, which is pretty amazing. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to get, so I could get grass and place it everywhere. Uh, I think two rows should be enough. Now, what I am going to do is, I think what we can do is use these to our advantage. Alright, I'm going to replace these here. Alright, and, uh, ooh, we might use sandstone stairs on top. Now, I'm pretty sure since stairs are like a transparency blocky thing, they won't, uh, they allow that grass to stay there, they won't block out any of that, uh, block out the grass in any way, so. Whoa, that went crazy. Alright, so, our experiment looks good, um, these look like they're staying there, and, that should light up the grass. Alright. Now on top of there, we could probably just throw in some blocks. Uh, hmm. Yeah. 
Actually, we could throw in more grass. We should throw in more grass there. Yep, I've changed my mind. Throw in more grass. The more the merrier, right? Alright. Cool, so this is coming along nicely. And let me just fine tune this up, make it look a little nicer. And let's be right back in a bit. Okay, so I've made some adjustments here. Now, before I continue on, I wanted to do a little experiment. Yes, experiments are always fun. So now we're going to throw some blocks up here. All right, I've got some torches up there. Hopefully I don't break those or anything. Now, I wanted to put a vine farm here. I said vine, vine. That, that's a, an annoying word to say. Vine. That's, oh, I think it's the rain outside. I've turned my particles to low because of that annoying rain. Uh, Alright, so now I want to place some vines like this. Hey, that's very strange. I n never knew that. Let's wow. Hmm. Now I want to see if the vines will grow down here. I'm pretty sure they will. They'll grow down here, and they'll spread along this wall. So I want to see if that happens. Uh, we want to make sure they don't spread past here, because that's where, uh, you know, things get tricky and we don't want vines coming all around here and once that gets past the it'll get start spreading everywhere now we don't want that we want to limit the spread of the grass so over here by the front we might actually just cut this off so um, I don't have any no we'll, we'll do it all right and we can replace those with hmm let's say wooden buttons wooden buttons would be okay right Eh, it can do. It'll be alright. Uh, actually, here's a, here's a neat little test. Let's see if we can place things on uh, upside down stairs. You see this back here? No, you can't. That's a shame. Now we have to do this. Replace that with one of those. And we basically just put buttons here. Now, putting buttons here is... Basically, until the vine, it can't grow there because the button's in the way. That therefore, the button, the the, uh, the vines won't be able to reach over here and start spreading like crazy weeds. All right, so we're going to let that run, uh, and the vines look really nice and green in this forest biome, which is really awesome. Now over here, I'm going to have my mycelium farm. It's probably going to be a ri oh, stupid lag. Ugh. Okay, now here let's do the a similar thing where we're going to have the buttons. Three buttons. And that doesn't look half bad. We'll have vines on both sides, I think. And it'll probably be a narrow corridor. And we can even see the little grass along here. Uh, I don't know, we could put like an indicator or something or do something fancy there. But uh, over here is where we're going to have our little cocoa bean farm. So we've got our vines sorted. Now, hopefully those grow. I don't know how long it takes for vines to grow, so... Bear with me. We're going to have a big wall of just plain cocoa beans here. Yeah, uh, that should, probably should be enough cocoa beans, I I hope. Okay, so here we're going to... Oh, wow, I'm never prepared for these things, aren't Am I? Okay. I'm, I still need to work on my grammar. I have trouble speaking properly to you guys. I'm, I talk and don't know what to say and say things wrong so I need, I need to work on that all right let's get that dirt back in there all right so that's a nice looking staircase I'd say we probably could replace that with a spruce stair but I can't be bothered at the moment now I think a perfect place for the wall is right there all right so I think what's gonna happen is I want this to be a wall of plain jungle wood okay so what I'm going to do here is have jungle wood, and now I could have droppers at the top to harvest everything, but no, no, it would mean I have to replace one of these with droppers, and that's boring, and it doesn't look as nice. A big flat wall of cocoa beans would look cool. So we're going to replace all of the back with sticky pistons, and what's going to happen is when we activate it, it's all going to retract, and we may even have hoppers all over the floor here, so that the... Uh, cooker beans can fall down into a hopper system but I'm not 100% sure it's really whatever happens so I'm going to clear out a bit more area and I'll give you guys a few little progress updates as things go 
Woohoo! Experiment complete! Look, so, I remember just placing two of these vines down, looks like it's spread, I think it's to the middle it's spread, and it's also spread downwards, which is awesome! That means we can harvest vines using this method. Alright, anyways, uh, now I realize that if I were to put uh, sticky pistons behind all of this wall, it would total up to 32. Now that's uh, quite a lot, you know, just, just saying. And I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I don't want to have to get 32 sticky pistons. That's quite a waste just for a cocoa bean farm. So, we're going to do an experiment. Don't you guys like, love more experiments? Alright, now we're going to see if this finally works. Now, I'm not sure if it works. Don't tell me if it is or not. Because I'm going to find out right now. Alright, can you see what I'm doing? Alright, now what's supposed to happen is if I push that button to activate that piston right there, it's going to push these logs along and uh, make sure all these cocoa beans pop off. But there's also a chance that since this is pushed over, there will still be a jungle wood block there, so it might keep the cocoa bean on it still. It's cool how it glows. Look, it's, it's a glowing, co glowing cocoa bean. Alright, let's see if this works. It works! It's a miracle! Alright, that's amazing. I'm glad they fixed that. Um, before, that didn't used to work with cocoa beans. Uh, they used to just stay on there, so... Now that we know that works, I can just replace these sides with pistons, which is so much more cheaper. And, yeah, I'll, I'm going to do that. And probably some basic wiring, and we'll see what happens next. So guys, after some time, we can see that the vines have grown to their third length. This means that... Wow. Yeah, I got nothing to say about that. Alright, all I gotta say is that let's place some more vines there. Oh! Oh, look at that! Looks like I have done some work on the cocoa bean farm. Yes, I have. Now, this looks like it's more... There's more jungle wood to the side here because that, that's because I've got this big wall here once we throw in the mycelium farm here then it's gonna look a lot better for now actually I think I'm actually just building another grass farm on this side until I get a mycelium from a mushroom biome but as you can see I've got our big wall of cocoa beans or of jungle wood and we just need to throw on our cocoa beans like so Alright, I would throw in some walls here to cover all the wiring, but for now I just want to show you how the, everything works. Cool. So, the wiring works nice. I've got two buttons here. So you come down the stairs, big wall of cocoa beans, and we push the button and some things happen. So let's go over the wiring. No, no, no let's, let's take a look at it. So, do you see that right there? That was pretty cool. So... Basically what happened is the pistons quickly fired the jungle wood over to that side. Oh, I'm stuck in a block here. And then the pistons over here pulled it back. Now you can see I've got water here. Now you might be going, why on earth do I have water here? It's just stupid. It's just going to make an annoying sound. Well, first off, it's not going to make that much of an annoying sound because the water um, next to us... Let's see, over here, by the pumpkin farms, making far much more annoying noise than this, so, yeah. And, uh, what happens is that, uh, since this block is empty, because we need a to these pistons to fire over here, uh, what's happening is that there's a big air gap here, and what can happen is Enderman will suddenly teleport in here, and I don't want Enderman in here, so... To prevent all those endermen from popping up in there, I've got water. And as soon as it fires over... Alright, let's fire this thing. Alright, so everything hits over here. You can see that it blocks off the water. Alright. And if we fire this side... You can see it pushes it over and pulls it back. The water flows back down. So, yeah, absolutely fine. No endermen should spawn back there. And this side moves pretty fast, so the chances of it, it being raining, and I push the button, and there's an enderman at the exact same time wanting to teleport somewhere, and it chooses this exact position, is very unlikely. So, yeah. Uh, so, that's how basically it works. As you can see, the cook beans on it. 
you just push the button and everything gets harvested it's pretty cool and if you really need to see the wiring I'll show you guys alright the buttons both buttons are connected to the same input as you can see these both buttons both buttons are powering the redstone just below it pretty cool this right here is just a simple uh, monostable circuit so as soon as you push it it's gonna this uh, this torch right here is going to turn on off. All right, we can I can show you right there. Uh, if we look at that redstone dust, oh, it's too quick. Did you see it? All right, Sl can we get a good angle on this thing? All right, uh, how about if we grab ourselves this? All right, now watch that redstone dust right there. Do you see that? It flickered on and off. Alright, now that on and off signal goes through here, uh, redstone torch, it's off, this redstone torch is on, redstone dust, now right here is a redstone torch, alright, don't believe me, uh, if we can get a better view we can see it, there's a redstone torch, it's off, that redstone torch will power that piston there, and the redstone torch will power this dust, which will power that red uh, piston right there, powers the block above it, powering that piston, there's a redstone dust right there powering that piston. So it powers all four pistons, which is awesome. Same for this side, uh, but you get a big, better angle at how things work here. And what I have on this side is a three tick repeater delay before going into its uh, monostable circuit, which shortens the pulse, so that it allows this thing to push the jungle wood over first before we activate those pistons. So as you can see, um, push the button, those pistons activate first, then those ones, so yeah, pretty awesome. Now let's do some of the walls here, we don't want to see all that stuff, I'm sure I have some way of getting back into here somehow, but for now, lock it all off.